ओम शांति वी आर स्टडिंग राजयोगा फ्रॉम शिव बाबा हिमसेल्फ एंड टुडे बाबा इज टीचिंग आस हाउ टू बी एन एयर एयर मीन्स वारिस वारिस मीन्स समबडी हु बिकम्स अ प्रिंस अ किंग इन सत्युग एंड सो बाबा टूडे सज दैट स्वीट चिल्ड्रन इन ऑर्डर टू बिकम एन एयर कॉन्स्टेंटली टेक केयर दैट यू डोंट परफॉर्म एनी एक्शन अगेंस्ट श्रीमत नाउ वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड श्रीमत इन ऑर्डर टू नॉट परफॉर्म एनी एक्शन अगेंस्ट श्रीमत सो दैट आई बिकम एन एयर यू सी दैट इन वन ऑफ द क्लासेज आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ वी हैव बीन टोल्ड एंड इनफॉर्म्ड that shiv baba gives us protection yes in bhakti also we know that god protects and god blesses so we turned our attention towards god whenever we needed protection and blessing because we knew that we were told that god functions that way then when we came to gyan we were told that god is also the ocean of love the ocean of peace so we started understanding that when you need love the the usual way is you turn your attention towards people because you think that protection god will give blessing god will give but love people will give so you turned your attention towards people for love until then but now that we understand that baba gives us love and we sit with that awareness we receive the love have you felt the love of baba yes did you feel the peace that the ocean of peace can give you yes okay now baba tells us that i can make you an heir so i'm creating golden age and you can become an heir in golden age also now we have to you know connect our intellect with baba and understand that just by following shrimat i can become an heir in satyuk and once you once this sits in my buddhi then just like you know people thought that happiness and peace is a very difficult thing to find but we found that in a second similarly just by holding this in our buddhi and being certain about it that god is the creator of satyuk and he is teaching me how to become an heir in satyuk and if i did that i would become an heir in satyuk so baba today says understand my shrimat don't perform any action against shrimat and just by doing that in one birth you can become an heir in satyuk and whatever baba says is 100% true but we follow it number wise because our faith is number wise so we don't have complete faith so we don't follow it but if you moved with complete faith that if i do this then i am going to be the heir then you will be now today baba says that there are two types of children 
who become heirs in Satyug. So there are two types of children, two different absolute categories. First is the surrendered children. Surrendered children means those who live in centers in Madhuban and those who are sustained physically and spiritually by Baba's Yajna. Yes, there are this category of children. So they are, they are the one category and Baba says their philosophy of karma is very deep. Yes, and I will tell you there are some things about this philosophy of karma which Baba has told us. For example, you see that Baba has told children who live in the centers that if you are economical, if you just don't waste water, electricity or, you know, money, so if you have to prepare a Brahma Bhojan and you prepare it very economically. So if another person would use, you know, uh, maybe expense would be 20,000 and you manage to uh, uh, organize the whole thing in such a way that only 15,000 is used for the Brahma Bhojan, then that 5,000 rupees that was saved it's like you contributed it to the yagya. Yes, it's like, you know, when somebody comes from outside, they, they give a bhandari. So they give some contribution to the yagya. And Baba says, when you live in the center and you save that much, that's like your contribution to the yagya. Now, this is a very deep philosophy that you can do dhan seva without actually giving any dhan <laughs> when you're inside yes so baba has said that when somebody is staying surrendered in the center then their karmic philosophy is very very deep that's a different karmic philosophy altogether now i gave you one example of that karmic philosophy. There are other things also that Baba talks about. Then Baba says, there are others who live at home with their families and remain pure trustees. So majority of the children who are listening to the class are those children, right? Those who are living in the family. So Baba says, these children are also possible heirs. It is not like only those who live in the center will become a king or prince in Satyug. Yes, it is not like that. So Baba says, the second category of uh, heirs is those children who live at home with the families. But the condition is you remain pure trustees. Yes, so one is you remain pure. Second is you remain a complete trustee. Okay. Now, Baba says they definitely need to work hard to become full trustees. Because, you know, when you're living in the household, it is I and mine that consumes you. Yes, there is ownership over everything. So, you know, when you live in the center, you automatically know this is Baba's house, this is Baba's Bhandara. The clothes I wear have been given by Baba. <laughs> You're receiving it from Baba, so you know it is Baba. But when you're living in the household, then removing that sense of ownership from everything and becoming pure trustee is a subject of effort. Yes, and then Baba says, if they do become full trustees and break their attachment away from everyone, 
they can claim a right to the full inheritance. So, you know, attachment makes you do extra. So, extra time, extra effort, extra thought. Are you giving extra time, extra thought, extra sustenance to those who, are you, who you are attached to? Yes. So, when you remove that attachment, then you, what you do is, you take care of whatever belongs to you, whether it's the body, the relationships, the work, you give it the time, thought, attention that is required. But then you understand that everything that you have belongs to Baba. And then you save, you know, tan man dhan man vachan karam. So you are saving all your capacities from excess expenditure and then you are using it in Baba's seva. So that is becoming a trustee. Becoming a trustee means using your resources for what you have been given. So we have been given this Sangam Yugi resources, this body, mind, wealth, time, thought, everything for seva. And Baba says, when you don't have attachment, you understand, okay, this much is required. Baba never said that you, you know, you abandon the family. No, Baba doesn't say that you abandon your children or your, uh, you know, spouse or anybody. But Baba says, when you are attached, then you are spending more than necessary. So what you do is, give them as much as needed and then what you do is you understand that I belong to Baba and everything I have is for Baba's Seva. And you must understand that the truth is, the profound truth is, I am a soul, I belong to Baba. I am a soul and I belong to Baba. And only when I do things on Baba Srimad can I the soul benefit. That's the only profound truth. But what happens is body consciousness doesn't allow you to recognize this truth. Body consciousness creates a sense that you belong to the government for which you work or to the uh, to the company for which you work or to the people you live with or those who you are connected with blood relations but the thing is even if you did everything that pleased them that will not ensure your spiritual growth and benefit so if it was that I belong to my family my job my body then the result should be that when I did everything right for my body, for the people around me and for my job, then I would never suffer. But is it so? If you do, if you take care of the body, if you take care of your relationships, if you take care of your job, will you never suffer? Will there be no emotional, financial suffering ever? Is that possible or physical suffering? No, Baba says that it's not like if people around you are pleased with you, your boss is pleased with you or you know anybody you work for is pleased with you or your body is having a good time with you, you will receive Satyugi happiness. No, it doesn't work like that. So Baba says, Follow Srimat, understand that the truth is you are a soul, you belong to me and I am the only one who can ensure spiritual well-being for you. Spiritual well-being which will be reflected in health, wealth and happiness constant in Satyug. But Baba says that that will only happen if you follow my Srimat accurately. 
and what stops you from following Srimad is attachment. Yes, attachment means this sense of this is mine and that is mine and this is my responsibility and that is my responsibility. So all or this attachment which makes you feel that whatever is mine belongs to them. So this is something that Baba says that the second kind of heirs is those who belong to me but they have to become full trustees, pure and trustees so that they can claim that inheritance. And then Baba today says that I tell you the deep philosophy of action, neutral action and sinful action. And today I will tell you four points very quickly that you see that when we say sinful action, now neutral action is only in Satyug and Treta Yuga. So that will be when it will be. There is no neutral action from the corporate. And what is sinful action? So there are four kinds of sinful action. First thing is not doing what you are not supposed to do. No, 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 sorry. Not doing what you are, uh, so doing what you are not supposed to do. Yes, so the first kind of sinful action is you do what you are not supposed to do. Now what is that? Baba has told us, don't act under the influence of lust, anger, ego, attachment and greed. So th that is the first kind of sinful action. We all understand this, but still, are you free from sinful action? Don't you perform actions under the influence of lust, anger, ego, attachment and greed? So that is sinful action. Now, second category is not doing what you are supposed to do. So the second category is you are not doing what you are supposed to do. Now what are you supposed to do? You see, when Baba comes and I belong to Baba and I take sustenance from Baba, it becomes obligatory for me to follow Srimad. Yes, have you understood this law that once you belong to Baba and then you perform a sin, then the calculation of that punishment grows hundredfold. Saguna Dand. Why? Because when you belong to Baba, Baba is investing in you. And then if you are not serving the world by becoming pure, by having a pure heart, mind, pure actions, or you are not using your resources for world seva, then that becomes a sinful action. And Baba tells this very nicely in the Murli today. Baba says, if you don't perform good actions, then sinful actions continue to increase. Just by not performing good actions after belonging to Baba, sinful actions continue to increase. So this is the second category of sinful actions. And this is a very tricky area because we don't recognize this often. Yes, sometimes we feel that we have a right to Baba's sustenance, which is true, but we also have duties. Baba has come from the soul world and he is giving his time, thought, making so much effort to educate us and empower us for good actions. Yes, good actions done through body, mind and wealth, but if we don't do that, 
then that automatically becomes a sinful action. Yes. Now, what is the sign? So sometimes, you know, when you must, uh, so there are signs and you kind of understand when you're doing a sin. So uh, earlier also, the sins which you understood created guilt in you, right? They made you feel sorry. Now, have you noticed that after coming to Baba, when you know that this is the right thing to do and this is what I should do as Baba's child and you're not doing it, do you feel that heart gnawing at you? You feel there is something inside which tells you that you're not doing the right thing because you as a soul have become aware that this is also a kind of sin. And if you have understood it and you're still continuing to, you know, not do good actions through the body, mind and wealth, then do you think that at the final moment you will have a clear conscience? Now, then how will you become an heir in Satyuk? <laughs> So this is another kind of sinful action. Then the third is, so let's club it together, giving sorrow, taking sorrow. Today in the Murli, Baba says, you know, you children mustn't cause anyone sorrow. Now the thing is, this giving sorrow, this um, uh, giving sorrow is a very complicated um, you know, this complicated dharana because until now, until we came to Baba, we had been taught to not give sorrow first. So, you know, we, what is our conditioning? Our bhakti conditioning is don't give sorrow first. But if someone gives sorrow, then not giving sorrow is wrong. Yes, and there are people who tell you that, you know, if you are tolerating injustice, you are equally wrong. So, what do you do? You, um, when you think that the other person is giving sorrow or being unfair, then you also have to be equally unfair. To balance that or you know you also have to be equally angry and revengeful and misbehaved so that that person understands that they are wrong but Baba says this is not true Baba says never ever give sorrow even if the other person continues giving sorrow you know, 10,000 times, you are not allowed to give sorrow back. Because whatever you do will create your karma. So, this is a very important thing to understand. There is a big difference in bhakti and in jnana. So, even if somebody comments at you, you are fully capable of making a comment back. But don't do that. That sanskar has been instrumental in creating a lot of karmic account for you. So don't do that. Never spoil your heart, your mouth, your actions because of somebody. So even if the other person is unjust, unfair, whatever, you can take course of the law. If there is something you can report, you report. But don't take the law in your own hands. Baba has said, you don't set out to do justice. You cannot do that. So if it has to be reported to the legal system of the country, you report it. If it, is, if it has to be reported to the legal system in the office, you report it. 
if you have a senior at home and you think that that person can be reported to you report it in the yagya we also report to our seniors but taking a decision on my own and thinking that i have a right to do wrong because the other person did wrong baba says no baba categorically categorically baba asks this question if somebody gets angry and you get angry in return then what makes you think that they did the wrong thing but you did the right thing so it doesn't work like that and i loved this in yesterday's murli when baba said that every judicial system in the world is flawed only i dharmraj am the one who makes who you know ensures justice because you see that there is a limited judicial system in the world and they don't know what happened between you and the other soul in the last births yes and sometimes they will condone an action and say that this happened in self defense or this that but baba says no you must understand that whatever is happening is happening because of a karmic reason and until and unless you better your karma that's not going to go away and if you keep reacting and keep spoiling your karma then you are only exacerbating the situation aggravating the situation so don't give sorrow yes you have to yeah, yeah it doesn't mean that you don't communicate you communicate if you need to talk you talk but you have to understand that i don't create any karma in the process which is against you know against my knowledge of good karma so i don't have to think ill speak ill act ill you can talk you can communicate you can try to negotiate solve the situation but don't take the law in your own hands so this is something and then another area where sins are created is taking sorrow so when you take sorrow also you create a lot of sin so the drama is what it is it is kalyug it has to behave like kalyug and then if you take sorrow from the drama then baba says that you are creating a karma out of ignorance so don't take sorrow now baba today says that you know brahma baba so do you know that brahma baba constituted a committee of mothers and he handed over everything to those mothers whatever he had and then he he also followed the decisions that that committee made so baba says that i became a trustee alive so you know i didn't i didn't wait for death to come and then i would will everything to baba when baba was very much in the body he willed everything to the trust and then he lived according to baba shrimat now baba says that there is no other person who does that but there are some who will everything after they leave the body so you know they make a will that after i leave the body everything will go to baba but baba says what you have to understand and be very sure of is even while you are alive everything belongs to baba and you and by doing this you will be protected because baba says that if you if you are very clear that everything belongs to baba 
then you will seek direction in everything. So for every expense, for every physical activity, for everything that you do, you will take Baba's direction. And what happens is there is a possibility of mistake in everything. Yes, so you can create karma through body, mind and wealth anytime. So Baba says, I stop you from creating any more vikarma if you take direction. So being a trustee helps you because you then take directions and you are protected from creating any vikarma out of it. So this is something that Baba also tells us. And then today Baba says something very interesting which is which I never thought and <laughs> it never crossed my mind that this is such a revelation that Baba makes. So Baba says today that generally it is mothers who are poor. They don't possess anything. They are not even half partners. Otherwise it is only if a will is made that a half share goes to her. Yes, so not automatically, but the government rules have changed and maybe today that goes half to her. It is only the so sons in the home who are heirs, although the government has made different laws nowadays. So earlier, you know, when the husband died, the money didn't go to the wife. It went to the children directly. Okay, so this is something that Baba tells and another thing Baba, which is very shocking Baba says, you know that Bharat is now totally poor, Kumaris too are generally poor until they go to their in-laws home. She receives everything when a deal is made for vice. This is a vicious world. You see that when a Kumari is in her parents' home, they do not write any part of their property to her, do they? They don't give, the, give her anything. And when she goes to the, parent, to the in-laws' home and she pays the price of vice, then she has a right to that property. Just think about it, the viciousness of the world that a girl child has no right to any property until she pays the price of vice. And Baba says this is an amazingly vicious world. And then, you know, if, uh, if the woman says that from, you know, I have understood Baba, I have understood purity and from today I don't want to give you any vice or I don't want to quench your thirst for lust, then the husband says, get out of the house. So you are here until you pay that price and if you don't do that, then you are not entitled to anything. You are not even entitled to a respectful life. And you know, in the Yagya history, I have read that when this situation came up and the husband started beating the wife or you know, the in-laws started complaining that this woman is not, um, we, we brought her to quench the lustful, you know, <laughs> thirst of my son and this woman is not obliging now. So uh, they made a huge hue and cry about it. Then even the parents of that girl, they came and they started, you know, scolding her because she is not doing that. And that is the kind of viciousness of the world. And these days also I have seen that. You see, there is this one sister and when she, when she told her husband, I don't want to be impure anymore. I've understood Baba, I want to be on the path of purity. 
then that sister's brother started complaining to us that you are teaching her wrong things. Now just imagine what does the brother have to do in this situation? <laughs> And what is the brother professing? The brother is saying that you tell my sister to have lustful relationship with my Jijaji because otherwise she will come back home and we will not take care of her. So this is such a vicious world. So every condition is based on this give and take. So it's, it's a contract of lust basically. So every relationship is working through a contract of lust. And Baba brings this to our notice today. And then Baba says, just give up body consciousness. Body consciousness is making you think that, you know, selfishness, lust, greed, everything is normal and natural, but it is not. And when you come out of body consciousness and see who you really are and what is your true quality, obviously you will have to need a lot of strength because in this world doing the right thing is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Even if you are, you know, you want to keep your body, your mind, your wealth pure, very difficult because people make rightful claims on them. You know, they will make the claim that this body belongs to me and I have the right to abuse it or this wealth belongs to me and I have the right to claim it. But Baba says, understand that you belong to Baba, everything belongs to Baba don't shy away from your duties, you do that. But then rest of it, you understand that 63 births you have created with karma. Now stop, now become a trustee and do everything on Baba Srimad. And that is what will ensure that the next 21 births, there will be no suffering, it will be a happy world, happy life. And then today Baba in the blessing talks about forgiveness and you know forgiveness in the world has assumed a very body conscious connotation. So you think that, so we usually forgive with ego, so you know, I forgave you and that's it. So. Um, I will tell you one incident. So there was this one brother and he told me that somebody he sent five messages to didn't reply back. Okay, so this is a very funny incident. So <laughs> he sent five messages to someone and that person did not reply back. So what he did is he blocked his number okay and then I told him what is this how can you behave like this so then he said I forgave that person I have no hard feelings but I blocked his number so I <laughs> so <laughs> why I'm telling you this is uh, we are working with a very bizarre notion of forgiveness so we say, I have forgiven this person, but I never want to see his face. I've forgiven this person, but I never want to interact with him. I've forgiven this person, I've blocked his number. So how, what is this kind of forgiveness? <laughs> so Baba says, what is forgiveness actually? Baba says, to forgive someone means to give him blessings of good wishes and cooperations. So you give him good blessings of good wishes. And then second thing is you cooperate. How do you cooperate? So when you understand that somebody is making a mistake, you help them 
you know, come to that state of awareness where they don't make the same mistake with another person. And you do it with so much love that they change. So, even if you feel that somebody has wronged you, forgiveness means you not only give them good wishes, that's one thing, but second thing is you help them do better next time. And you can't help them by lecturing them. Yes, if Baba gave us a lecture every day, would we listen? <laughs> so Baba helps us, you know, by realizing. So Baba gives us so much love with so much truth that it stirs something inside us and makes us realize. So Baba says you cooperate with that soul. You make them do better next time. That is forgiveness. Okay. Om Shanti